All right, in class today, we're going to learn how to write the domain and range of a function in three notations, interval notation, inequality notation, and set notation. If you have not already done so, use the, uh, use the uh, link there to go to domain and range introduction and um, yeah, go to I mean, and, and actually go see if you can go through that entire activity yourself. We actually have a review. Uh, I'll be looking at your work and commenting it as we go. Now, as you uh, let's summarize three important things that comes out of the introduction to domain and range activity in Desmos. One question is, when do we need to include more than one inequality to discuss the domain and range of a function? And that happens uh, when we have a piecewise function. So when we have a piecewise defined function, you know, like it's, it's a discontinuous pieced off, we may need a, to use either a disjoint inequality or more than one inequality to describe all of the domain and the range because it's not just a single interval, it may be multiple intervals. Okay. Next question, when is it important to use a strict inequality versus a non-strict inequality? And when we're talking about a strict inequality, we're talking about strictly less than or strictly greater than. When we're talking about, or when we're talking about uh, non-strict, then we're just talking about less than or equals to or greater than or equal to. So when do we use one versus the other, okay? Well, when you have a point in the domain or the range that is not included, we use a strict inequality. That means that if you use strictly less than or strictly greater than, and there is no underlying, you don't underline the uh, inequality in that case because it's a strict inequality. All right. I know that might seem kind of intuitive, intuitive, but when you underline the inequality, you're including the endpoint. And, and also, when you're using interval notation, you're using a bracket instead of, or I think, yeah, you're using, I believe it's called a bracket, instead of a parenthesis. The brackets mean included, and the parenthesis means do not include. Now, what is the difference between how we write the domain of an inequality versus how we write the range of an inequality? Well, since the domain is the set of all x values, we're going to use the variable x. And since we, the range is the set of all y values, then we use the variable y. So anytime you're talking about the domain of a function, you're talking about the x values of a function, use x in your description, either where you're using set builder notation or uh, inequality notation or uh, interval notation. Okay? Well, actually, interval notation, you don't need to use any variable. Right? Just make sure you're describing the right uh, interval when you use interval notation. So now, if you have not already done so, go through the finding domain and range activity. And uh, you can use the same, use the link that's in your one pager to get there. Okay. Now, well, when, and actually the only discussion we're going to have about that is we had it on a Zoom call or we can have it in tour if you like. Uh, we'll, we'll just review and highlight some of the answers to the activity. Okay. So let's go ahead and summarize all three types of notation. Okay. We have Interval notation. Interval notation is probably the easiest one to use. Well, you just, uh, you have, basically, you just have the endpoints in parentheses or braces, depending on whether they're included or not. And same thing with the range. That's, that's all it is. Uh, with inequality notation, you're going to use less than most, most of the time, 99% of the time, you're going to use less than and actually, we're going to call it between. You're going to use uh, a compound inequality. That's what this is called, with either x or y in the center. And the endpoints are going to be on the outside 
So here, this means X is between this number and this number. That's a domain. Here, this means Y is between these two numbers, and it includes these two numbers. So it just depends on the particular graph. And for set notation, it's really closely related to inequality notation. So here we're saying all values of X such that X is greater than a number. Okay. Um, here we're saying Y is all values of Y where Y is all real numbers. That's, that's what set notation is. Um, you'll find closely, very closely related to inequality notation is like a combination. All right. So let's go into more detail. All right. Let's suppose that we're describing this blue graph. All right. I'm going to draw and I have drawn here the domain of this graph. Notice that the X values do not stop going to the left and they do not go into the right. If I was to uh, shade like we did in Desmos, this whole page would be orange. So the domain is all X values. So, um, and the range, if you look at it, is uh, the lowest point on the graph is pretty much right there at this at three. And then it just goes up uh, to positive infinity from there. So let's uh, write that in the three kinds of notation. We got domain is all real numbers. All right, we can refer that. And actually, that should be a negative infinity right there uh, to infinity. So forgive that mistake there. There's something I said. I did correct it down here. And the inequality notation, we did get it correct there. And then in set notation, X is all real numbers. You see how we did that. On a range, we got is from uh, the endpoints of three and positive infinity. It includes the three because there are no open circles at three and it goes up to positive infinity. Same thing with inequality. Includes the three endpoint. What do you see on the line there? That means included. Uh, you can't include infinity because it is not a number, so it can't be included. So you'll never see uh, greater than less than or equal to infinity. You'll never see that. Okay. And you'll never see less than or equal to. Well, you'll never see greater than or equal to infinity. That doesn't even make sense in either way. right? And then you got set notation. Uh, y, all Y such that, that's this line here stands for a vertical line, such that Y is greater than or equal to three. Okay. So that's set notation. Okay. Let's keep going. All right. So now we're looking at uh, another example. And you try this one. You can pause the video if you want to try it on your own and you can check it. Coming back in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's look at the answers. Check your work. Again, we got that same little mistake right there. Please remember this is supposed to be a negative infinity in front on the interval notation. Got it right here on the range. Okay. All right. That's Mr. Hernandez there who we met in the other video. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, not me. That's Mr. Hernandez. See, he has hair. I have a hat. That's the difference. Uh, that's pretty much the only difference between us, really. All right, let's keep going. All right, so now Mr. Hernandez and myself, we want answers. See if you can write domain and range in all three notations for this graph. You can pause the video if you like. Answers in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's see what the answers are. All right, what I did was I gave you part of the answer. You notice in the, the, the domain in interval notation, we start at negative five, include negative five, stopped at two, did not include the two. All right, what about the range? Well, the range starts at negative two, Includes negative two, but does not include positive two. So there is our range, and you see how it is easy to write it in interval notation. So let's translate to inequality notation. 
And then let's look at set notation. All right. Hope you did a great job. All right. Feel that. All right. All right. If you have not uh, done so, choose the correct period and take your quiz. You will not be able to take the quiz if you choose the wrong period. So make sure you choose the right period. All right. This is in uh, all in learning. Okay. So sign in with your Google, uh, with your school. Um, credentials and you shall be fine and this will automatically grade all right this will be a grade Chris Gordon all right now if you would like to add some points to your quiz grade then uh, I challenge you to go to this website and explain how you would write to somebody if explaining what if you were explaining the three notations to uh maybe a third grader all right see if you can do it the challenge is for you to do it in less than 90 seconds so go to this uh there is a i did could provide the link in the one pager but also have it there uh i think and i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna do that and um click on that and sign in again with your school information and record a flip grid yeah you do this correctly I will add, I add 20 points. I will add 20 points to your quiz grade if you uh, submit this flip grid. Okay, and that completes our video. Oh, you want to see mine? Okay, we'll see mine. Let's see if I can go to it. Let's see. I want to show my flip grid. All right. But actually, if you want to see mine, uh, that'll be a separate. I'll just do a separate variable with just mine. Okay? You guys have a wonderful day.